over to you. All right, thank you for joining us for the App Exchange Demo Jam. I'm Molly Hoffmeister, I'm on the App Exchange team, and I am thrilled today to be joined by Joshua Hoskins and Carrie McClaus. They are two of our amazing Salesforce MVPs, and they will be emceeing today's event. Um, and please do follow along and live tweet if you are on Twitter. Uh, the hashtag is App Demo Jam. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Molly. Everyone say happy birthday to Molly. It's Molly's happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So welcome to today's Apple uh, uh, App Demo Jam. It's, it's again, App Demo Jam for developers. So hopefully you guys will see something that you're able to take away um, today and, and use tomorrow when you go back and you know, write some awesome code. We've got six participants today. We've got Jitterbit, Code Robot, Prodly, Capado, Odeseva, and Otter Rabbits. So six great partners to show you their awesome apps and how they can help you be more productive in your everyday workspace. All right, so we couldn't do this without rules. I'm going to turn it over to Carrie to explain some of the rules that we have with the App Demo Jams. All right, rule number one, each participant gets three minutes, and it will be a hard cutoff. It will be. We have sounds. No slides. This is a live demo. There will be one winner, winner voted by everyone here, live voting. You cannot vote for your own company, though. We ask that you vote for someone else. And at the end of the day, the winner is going to go home with this awesome Demo Jam trophy. <laughs> All right, you ready? I think we're almost ready. So we've right. got some sounds that we'll play. So each person, like Carrie said, will have three minutes to give their demo. And at the two and a half minute mark, they may hear something like this, which will let them know that they have two and a half minutes. Afterwards, they'll hear a buzzer at three minutes to know that time's up. So that's what we've got going on for you. And our first up, we've got Otter Rabbit. You ready? All right. So first up, we've got Otter, Ra Otter Rabbit. They enable developers to check in quality code in source control along with metadata for best practices. And they are industry, uh, industry leaders in, in this space. I have Narendra who's going to kick us off, right? Ranjan. And Prashant. Yep. All right. You guys ready? I think so. <laughs> All right, over to you. Your three minutes starts now. Uh, oh, can you open, up, um, open up a clock real quick. Yes. Your mic is right there. I got it. All right, three minutes starts now. Go. Yeah. Uh, good morning. On this awesome day of developer conference, uh, let, us, let me resonate with you on what does it make to, to have a great developer experience. A developer experience is said to be great when, when he is able to produce quality code with meeting the, meeting the best practices and then go home and sleep peacefully without getting calls in the midnight. I am sure, I am sure you all, you all uh, resonate with me on that. Now, let me, let me go through uh, Auto Rabbit, while there are several reports, dashboards, next two minutes, I want to focus on how we give value, how we make developers productive uh, in, in a way that they produce high quality code on time, meeting the best practices. Now, now, as a developer, this is where my life starts. I have a story, probably in my ALM tool. Here, for example, I have a story in Jira. Now, I want to work, work through this. And as part of that, let's say I have worked on an Apex class uh, to complete my work, and I use Auto Rabbit. Auto Rabbit has a great check-in editor that fetches all the changes. Now I used it to fetch changes for the Apex class. It has shown that I have an Apex class. Now let me associate this change to my user story. So let me select Jira here. Let me select my Sprint. Let me click Go. And then I have my work item, trial at demo jam, awesome. Mm -hmm. Now let me say it's in progress. Now here is where a true early warning comes into picture. As a developer, you can make sure, is this code deployable? Is this code meeting the coverage, code coverage standards? Is this code meeting the compliance guidelines? And then, and then 
and then ensure that and as, as it passes through, you will have your reviewer approving it. And, and, and then once it is approved, then you can check in the code. All right, just give it just a moment. Yeah, we, we, we are connecting to the internet. Or maybe we use our iPhone, iPhone Wi-Fi. Is it connected now? All right. Go for it. Let's you guys it. got... Oh, uh, Let's go to direct validation. 40 more seconds. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, you can see here uh, where uh, the story, you can see the Apex results, probably Prashant, uh, can you just look at the results here? So order rabbit for the class that is chosen, it has identified tests dynamically on what tests to be run. Can you show, can, yeah, see, these are the test cases that are associated with this class. So you need, the developer need not worry about what tests to run. Auto Rabbit intelligently identifies Apex tests that need to be run. And then, this is static code analysis, where for the particular Apex class, what are the coding violations? For example, here I don't have priority one and two. My manager will be happy. And then, we have the validation deployment against the target environment, which means your integration, your UAT, you can be absolutely sure that this change that you are making <laughs> right, is not breaking time's it. All right, up. Yeah, finally. All right. Yeah. Thank you very and, much. Everyone give a round of applause for yeah, Rabbit. Just, just to close, we... Time's up. Clear lines so, of code checks in. Sorry, time's and, up. Yeah. Sorry. All right, just like that, three minutes is up. It's very, very precious. But what I'd like to see about AutoRabbit's uh, user interface is it's, uh, it's slick, it's nice, you see all your changes in one central area, and you're able to make sure you keep track of that code that you're checking, keep, keep track of your changes all in one user interface. And that's very important to all of us developers. So one more round of applause for AutoRabbit. Thank you very much. All right, and I'll turn it off over to Kerry for our next app demo jammer. Hello. Can, Can we get me? audio on the center for Carrie? Am I on? There we go. There you go. Awesome. Over to you. All right. Next up, we have Copado. Copado is a scalable Salesforce native application that integrates change management, Git file versioning, Selenium testing, and deployments in one single tool. Please welcome David. All right. David, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, your three minutes starts now, sir. Fantastic. So Copado is a release management tool that lets you orchestrate your org and branch strategy. So you can define a deployment flow that your changes need to go through from the dev environment all the way to production. And you can integrate your Git repository with it. To start working, just import user stories from your agile software like Jira, for example. Or you can create the user stories in Copado. So here, you can assign this user story to a developer. And once the changes are done in the dev sandbox, you can go ahead and commit the metadata components of the user story. So from within the Salesforce interface, you can select which metadata components are part of this user story and commit them directly from the, this visual force. Copato creates a feature branch in the background for this user story that contains the metadata components that you committed. So if you go back to the user story, you will see the committed metadata components in this list. If there's any Apex code, Copado detects it, and you can run Apex tests of the test classes that have been committed in the user story. You can also add Selenium testing in your user story so that it automatically runs as you deploy this user story to the next environment. You can also add manual testing as well as review your user story commits and track your metadata index. Once you are ready to deploy this user story, you can set a submit for approval process I got it for a where the user story, once it's approved, it deploys to the next environment. Now, in the user story promotions, you can see the Selenium test results of your user story as it is being deployed, and also regression tests that you have defined in your environment. And you can deploy multiple user stories at the same time. And Copado merges all the feature branches of your user stories. 
So if you look in Git, you see how Copado creates feature branches and automatically merges them to the target branch as you deploy user stories through your deployment flow. Now, if you go to the branch management application, you will see that Copado detects every new metadata component that has been committed in your user stories. So as you move them to integration, you can sync your development sandboxes with new changes. So Copado deploys the new metadata components and then merges the changes in your sandbox branches. So all that, you can keep a continuous process and keep your development sandboxes in sync. Now, also, in Copado, you can uh, record test scripts easily. 30 seconds remaining. Just uh, use the Copado Chrome extension to record the user interface as you do new changes. And this is the Chrome extension that's building the script for you. Now, coming up in our next release is adding external CR jobs to call Jenkins jobs before or after your deployment. You will also be able to do static code analysis of the Apex code in your user stories. Pull requests will be integrated in user stories so you can track pull requests, comments, and status. And I'm glad to announce that you will be able to create scratch or... <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Capato. Thank you very much. Capato. That was awesome, helping developers be more efficient, bringing Git, Selenium testing, the UI changes, Chrome extension is really cool. So thank you very much, David and Copato. All right. Copato was actually in Madrid, and they won the demo jam there. Let's see if you guys can do it again. <laughs> All right, next up we've got Code Robot. So from Code Robot, we have, who do we have? Milo. Yeah. How are you? All right, so Code Robot is introducing a revolutionary new product that is able to generate just how many? 1,000. 1,000 lines of code in five minutes. In five minutes. That's pretty incredible. I, so I, who's I, ready I, to I see that? <laughs> Everyone ready to see how we can generate 1,000 lines of code in five minutes? Let's, let's have a look. <laughs> um, in, in All fact, right. In Your time starts now. In fact, I realized that in three minutes, I can do about 360 words. But with Code Robot, many more lines of test code. Let's have a look. In this first little project that I prepared, I see one account and two opportunities that we magically added um, to this Code Robot project. Let me click this magic, wonderful little button. We should have more of those, right? And it will reach out um, to the org, to the current database, and everything that is referenced over here in opportunities accounts in the whole uh, project content will be transformed into beautiful, deployable, usable Apex test code. Let me scroll down a little bit. This is what it looks like. So everything is ready for you um, to copy and paste into your own environment, into your own Eclipse or whatever editor you're using. All that is left for you is this. You need to invoke your code, of course. But the heavy lifting is done. Let me give you another example over here. We went big, 50 accounts. That actually does produce easily 1,000 lines of code. Would you ever do this manually? Would you ever type this down? I don't think you Heck would. No. With Code Robot, um, you have the option to go much bigger. Or my last tab over here, go complex. This is a massive examples of relationships um, and lookups that look into each other to make sure that our logic is actually working because we do this automatically. The code will insert the account first and the um, opportunities later and so forth. It goes many, many levels deep. All this for about $60 per developer a month. That's it. We figured we will save you easily one hour. 30 seconds month. remaining. Very well. Go to our website. We have a free trial. Check it out. Give it a spin. Uh, reach out to us. Our booth is over there uh, for more discussions about my favorite test-driven development, the methodology that I think is fantastic and your only real weapon against some complexities that you just have to face in Salesforce. We all, we all have to. Thank you very much. Great. Time's up. Right underneath, right under the wire. Thanks, Milo. It was great seeing that UI. Got to give you props for having lightning uh, and showing us how we can generate a thousand lines of code 
just in under five minutes. So that was great. Thank you so much. All right. Um, so for those of you that have mobile devices, we'll want you to keep them handy because in a few moments after we get through all of our six presenters, we'll provide a URL on the screen where you will vote. You can only vote once. You can vote for the best app demo jammer today. And one of those app demo jammers will take, care, will take home the trophy. trophy. All right, Carrie, who do we have next? Next up, we have Jitterbit. Jitterbit Harmony is a unified cloud platform that democratizes traditional and API integration, helps you become digital business, connecting data, apps, and devices used by your employees, partners, and customers. You ready, Thomas? Ready to go. All right, three, two, one, go. All right, so what I have here is uh, Jitterbit's Citizen Integrator. Now this is a interface for running integrations that does not require creating a project, designing your integration, debugging the whole thing, nothing like that is involved. Now, what I'm gonna show you today is I'm gonna use an integration to bring my Shopify customer list, which we can see right here, and this is kind of messy. I have some duplicates. I have a lot of people that are missing information that I wish that I had. Um, so we'll see if we can do some cleanup along the way. So I'm going to access the, um, the Shopify API to pull down this list of customers. And then I'm going to go ahead and my integration is going to create a brand new Salesforce contact for every single one of my customers over in Shopify. And that'll be nice because Jacques is uh, looking kind of lonely here all by himself. So I can come over to Citizen and I can open up my integration. And now this is how easy this is. All I have to do is provide my Salesforce credentials. I can test to make sure that I type them correctly, and I have. And then I provide my Shopify credentials, and same thing, works fine. And then I go through, and I run my operation. That's all I have to do. No designing, no debugging, nothing like that. So now that my integration has started running, I'm actually going to come over, and I'm going to show you the project that backs this integration. And the reason I want to show you this is because if you don't like the default project that Citizen provides, you can grab it and you can edit it. So if I have some important information here in the note field of my customers, I can go ahead and I can bring that over, say, to the description field in the Salesforce contact target. And I can go ahead, I could save this project, I could upload it back up to Citizen, and I could use this version instead. This version is just for me, and it's going to do the extra things that I want. So let's go back over, take a look at my contact list. We should start to see some trickle in by now. Uh, but we're only at 27. I feel like I should have more than that. So I'm going to actually bounce over to my Jitterbit dashboard, take a look at what the heck's going on here. Why am I only at 27? So I have some warnings. And so Jitterbit is very helpfully telling me that, hey, you don't have a bunch of emails in some of your customers. And Salesforce is smart enough that it's, it's rejecting these contacts from being created. It's not allowing me to create a contact with no email address, and that's fine. I don't want a contact that doesn't have an email address. It's useless. So now I can come back. Now that we're over the hump of people with no contacts, we can see that we've created just over 700 uh, friends for Jacques. 30 seconds remaining. So that's really nice. And um, so using Jirbit and Salesforce, I've taken my list of customers, I've cleaned it up, and I've created brand new contacts for every single one of those customers. And I didn't have to create an integration, design a project, any of that. If I want to, I could change something, but everything that I really need is available right there without any headaches. All right. Well done. Under Thank the wire. Thank you, Jitterbit. As somebody who just did a redshift to Salesforce integration, this is awesome to see how easy it is and how uh, you guys have those error warnings in there. That's really important to troubleshoot your integrations. So thank you, Jitterbit. Yes, everyone give a round of applause for Jitterbit. OK. All right, so next up, we've got our friends at Odiseva. And our friends at Odiseva have this new product called Odiseva DX. And it's a command line CLI solution that makes adding data, ma uh, data management features to Salesforce way easier, and it's integrated with Salesforce DX. So you've got these concepts where I can automatically upload data, I can move my code, and I can run a command in your CLI that will allow us to anonymize the data inside the instance, right? Yep, right. That's pretty Thank amazing. You. I hope you get to show us this, because this is something that I hear a lot of customers want to do. And can we get their video on the screen? 
Awesome. All right. So your three minutes starts now. Over to you. All right. So Odasiva is a backup solution and archiving solution. We have some amazing UI to handle uh, handling 100 billion records per year. But today we are not going to talk about our UI, but our new product, the plugin for Salesforce DX to handle data for Scratch org or sandboxes in command line. So what Raphael is going to execute in a single line of command is something that would take multiple hours or days to do if you were working with the data loader or Excel file just to rebuild all of the relationships. So the command line just executed, actually, if you have a look at what it had done, is on the left you have a production org with real data, and on the right you have a scratch org or a developer sandbox that is just refreshed, which is empty, and as you know, as a developer, if you don't have data, you can, it's really pretty hard to develop. So what we want is to send some data over to the, left, to the right side of the screen, but not only the accounts, we want all of the relationships, all the contact related to it, opportunity, opportunity line items, the chatter files, task event, etc. So not only want, we want to do that, but we also want to transform the data so that we are going to remove PII, like personal information. We want to remove credit card number, social security number, and we want to do that in one single line uh, of common line. So let's have a look at the result and see if the job is completed. This is a real demo, so hopefully no demo effect for today. All right, completed. Let's have a look at the result. So let's refresh on the right side of the screen for, for the developer sandbox. And we should get some accounts. So only the account that has been selected for sampling are there. Let's open the, the United Oil and Gas and compare with the result. So we have the detail uh, that has been copied. We have the activity with the task and event. And we have the chatter files with the content management, etc. Let's have a look at the related information, uh, contact, cases, etc. And everything has been copied uh, as well. But let's have a closer look at the contacts. So for the contacts, you can see that they don't look the seconds. same as the production, right? So Liz De Cruz on the left, she's a VP production. And you can see that on the right, the VP production is called Cleveland Heinz. And the email and phone number has been completely anonymized. So that concludes the demo. But what you have seen is once you remove the UI and go for a CLI and common lines, suddenly you can integrate everything we do with your infrastructure and continuous integration. And we bring continuous integration for data with our plugin, Salesforce DX, Data ODX. Wow. OK. You certainly shown a lot in your three minutes. I don't really know where to start, but that's a whole lot of freaking awesome. I mean, I personally have spent hours upon hours anonymizing data, anonymizing personal identifiable information. The fact that I can do that with one line of code is simply freaking amazing. So thank you very much. All right, next up, I'll bring up Carrie. And who do we have next? So next up, and this is our uh, final <laughs> demo. So get your phones ready. Yeah, stick around for voting. For voting. Lovely. Um, we have Daniel and David. David and Daniel from Prodly. Prodly saves developers time and reduces software development cycles with its app called Mover. Mover. I like it. <laughs> Mover. This 100% native app um, is indispensable for moving data from production to sandbox, testing new code, moving master data from complex apps like CPQ from sandbox to production. It sounds pretty awesome. Are you ready to demo? We'll see about that. We are ready to All demo. All right. Let's do it. Three minutes starts now. Dan, Dan, we need to migrate a bunch of related data from production into a sandbox. Maybe. Pull, up, pull up your data loader. Maybe. Okay. Let me show you how. OK, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the parent data from the production org, and we're going to export it to a CSV file, then we're going to dump it into the sandbox. Dave, Dave. Dave. Hang on, Dan, just a second. OK, then we're going to re-export the sandbox data, put it into a spreadsheet, and then we'll take the child object data, and we'll do a VLOOKUP. Dave, Dave, Dave. What? We don't need what? to do that. No? We have Mover, the relational data migration tool for Salesforce developers and admins. Wow, why didn't you say so? Sorry, Dave. Let me show you. OK, let's take a All look. All right. So I have Mover open. This is, our, this is our production org. I have Mover open. I've already established a connection to the developer sandbox. And I'm going to go to the data set tab and just define the data that I want to bring over. 
All right. So I'm going to give it a simple name. All right. I'm going to select the account object. That's our starting point. I'm going to put in a simple query to pick up only the accounts of type prospect. All right. There we go. All right. So we've got two records. I'm going to make sure we replicate the owners so you can keep your accounts and your opportunities. Always a good idea. That's right. In the field section, we're just going to keep the default, take all the fields we can. And then I'm going to hop in the child record section. So these are all the child related objects, records for the account. Okay. So let's pick up our custom applicant object, take cases, contacts, and opportunities. See how, this, how easy this is, Dave? So I'm just clicking and it's creating these data sets and it'll pick up this data. And then, last thing is I'll hop into the case data set and make sure that we bring over the associated contact. That's it, Dave. In a few seconds, we have the related data set created, and I'm going to deploy it. I have my connection selected here. It's going to go to the sandbox. And it's deploying. So now we have the data flowing, and I'm on the result page. We have the results dynamically flowing in, in real time. So you can see here, it's already processing our accounts. And it's going to bring over all the related data and construct it in exactly the same way. And you can go remaining. as deep as you want, so as many relationships as you want. And what's cool here is I can open the account. Here's my account record, and I see all the data replicated and connected the same way. See? Piece of cake, right? Wow. So I guess with Prodly Mover, we, we're going to be data migration pros. What do you mean we, Dave? Come on, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Wow, that was amazing. I would like to never use Data Loader again. And <laughs> uh, we, we hope you don't. <laughs> All right. So I think we're ready. Guys, yeah, do you want to give a recap? What did you like about that, Carrie? Well, do you, have any, do you have any data to move? I always have a lot of data to move. I have fought with Data Loader and child objects for hours. When you have ID, circular, 15, 18 characters, yeah. different relationships, yeah. things like that. Yeah, we really well, did see some And as stuff. the token admin here today, I really appreciate that it's all click and drop. I don't have to mess with code. See, I like to see a lie, personally. <laughs> I'm, I'm a developer. How many developers do we have in the audience? How many button click <laughs> admins do we have in the audience? We haven't seen oh, that. I think I win. Nice. <laughs> All right, so does everyone have their mobile device ready? Please go ahead and take them out. And I am going to put up a lovely slide after I find a cable. Oh, here it is. I found a cable. All right, so take out your mobile devices, pull open your favorite mobile device uh, browser as well as maybe your, uh, your laptop. And if I can get it on the slide, perfect. So if you go to bit.ly slash developer, capital D, capital J, please go to this website. If you uh, were presenting today and uh, you want to vote for your company, you can't do that. Because we, we actually know, because we're secret We're like watching. That. We're a secret like that. Um, so please vote for your favorite, uh, favorite uh, demo jammer today. And again, they're going to win this famous uh, trophy. So it was really great to have a lot of the app demo jammers present here. We've seen a lot of them present. Um, one of the things that we do on a, um, on a monthly basis is every third Thursday of the month, we have the virtual app demo jam. Yes. And on the virtual app demo jam, have you ever been to one? I have. You yeah. have. So, so if you've been to that, you know that we do the same thing. We do it virtually. But it's themed every single month. Sometimes you do sales, sometimes you do service, and then sometimes we actually do developer tools as well. So it's a new thing for us. And uh, myself and Jess Gross uh, at CRM FYI, we basically host that with Jody Wagner as well. So please, if you are not coming to those virtually, please tell your organizations, your admins, your developers. It's a great way to quickly learn about apps. And actually, you know, if you don't have a need now, Sometime down the road, there'll probably be someone who you'll be talking to who will know an app that you need, right? Yes, definitely. So you said third Thursday. Every third Thursday of the month? What time normally? Oh, Jesus Christ. 
you're asking the guy who works several time zones. So uh, my best recommendation is to go to appdemojam.com. And there you can actually see past demo jams as well as the upcoming demo jams. Uh, and it's a great way to look at uh, all the apps that are in the, these different themes. Awesome. Oh, so, yeah. So how's your Trailhead DX going? This is my first Trailhead DX. My too. It's really exciting. I'm actually really excited about some of the apps we saw today. The, the demos in the keynote, the Salesforce DX, I'm actually really excited to get in there and maybe play with some command line. Command line, that's maybe. it, that's it, that's <laughs> what we want. Yeah, I mean, the, l like you said, the, de the, um, the keynote was absolutely fantastic. All of those key features and APIs that are open available from, from Leah on stage to Sarah Franklin, um, all of those guys showing awesome stuff. I remember just a year ago, Trail DX last year, which I wasn't able to attend, thinking, wow, they've got this Einstein stuff going on. They've got all of this stuff going on. But if you're a developer like me, I want to build apps. I want to touch the API. I want to I create something myself. And a year later, Salesforce has delivered, right? I can, I can do all those things myself. I can use the Einstein AI. I've got all access yeah. to this. And that's, Sentiment. That's great to intent, me. Intent. Those oh, are Oh, pop awesome. quiz. Can you name them all? No, probably not. <laughs> Neither can I just yet. But the fact is I have access to it. They're documented. They're in multiple languages. And all of us are going to go out and make great stuff and solve real big world problems. All right. Now, I'm looking for Molly. She's right here. Oh, she's right there. I didn't even see you. <laughs> How are we doing on the voting? Has everyone submitted? Raise your hand if you have not submitted your votes. If you have not submitted your vote, raise your hand. No one's raising their hand, so I think we're, we're there. It's a big there. deal. It's pretty it was awesome. Fairly trophy. close this time, actually. All right. So, can I please have all of the app demo jams on stage? And we're going to introduce the winner of this lovely trophy. Thank you, Molly. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. We got everybody. Do you have the list here? All right. So, did you guys have a good time doing that? Yeah. All right. I'm really, I'm really wondering who's going to win. So, it was really great to have all of the people that participated in this app demo jam. We've got Otto Rabbit. Give it up for Otto Rabbit. Woo. Capato, Jitterbit, Odaseva, Prodly, and Code Robots. So. We're down to the moment where we get to introduce the App Demo Jam winner, right? Is everyone ready? Can I get a drum roll, please? <laughs> drum roll, drum roll, come on. I don't hear it. It's a very official envelope. <laughs> it is a very official envelope. It's a very official. You want to see it? Yes. All right. You can actually say it. OK. All right, ready? Yes. And the winner is? And the winner is? Copato. Oh, congratulations, Copato. Thank you for the rest of the app demo jammers that participate in this demo. Great to see you. Thank you for participating. And we actually happen, hope, hope that you'll come next year or you'll be involved in one of our app demo jams uh, every month, third Thursday, and we'll see you guys on there. Congratulations to David, Congrats. Frederico. Thank you for coming, everybody, for and voting. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Have a very safe rest of Trailhead DX, everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Yeah, no worries.